Starseed slash Earthling couples. Zaire of Sirius, Sarayan council member. I have seen this with my own Earth parents, my father being a reincarnated vegan starseed and my mother being of Pleiadian lineage, however very much indoctrinated into the Matrix. I see this with my friends as well, I'm speaking of the case of where one starseed marries or partners with an Earthling partner. Are these couples twin flames? Probably not. Ivo and I channeled on the subject of starseed parents raising children on Earth, and this is a subject that was brought up to my mind as I was rereading this channeling. A link in the original channeling in the description. I believe this subject is so interesting that I started a new blog for it and I'll include this channeling in it. So I've asked Zaire of Sirius, who is an 8th dimensional council member, to help us to understand the universal program aspects of this. I believe there is a grand plan. I believe that many plans were put into place along the way in the liberation of Earth and ultimately the entire galaxy, from evil. I also believe that the light has fought the dark on this planet for many years and star seeds are nothing new to this planet. There are many star seeds who have become trapped here or some have chosen to stay here, to go through this empty reincarnation process of virtually zero growth, over and over again. I personally know people who were alive during the time of Atlantis who have spent their entire lives behaving like children and the environment in which they were raised as well as mind control has continued to dumb them down. One person I'm thinking of was a mystic in Atlantis and has psychic or multidimensional skills but even in their old age is essentially very immature. The DS has done a wonderful job of prohibiting personal growth in the individual, primarily in the making acceptable of immaturity as a state of adulthood. It is not. I see it's rampant now but many people are incapable of outgrowing what they learned as children, to manipulate and to try to control, for example, because it is simply more acceptable now to do so. So they figure why should they? Ivo and I have worked hard to provide ways to do so, as well as to tell you that mastery of the mind should be worked on and that is the reason one incarnates, but some of you still seem to think this is just my personal pet peeve, something that I should get over. So you've missed the entire point of this, sorry for you. You've missed the pot of gold. Zaire, you don't fit in there, Sharon. Me, no, I don't. I have outgrown the matrix and eradicated it from my mind. This planet never met my needs and it still doesn't. I have never been mirrored by someone who can show me the truth about myself and for this reason I'm chomping at the bit to get on Ivo's ship. Zaire, as all should do. But you wish to know about the grand plan, and there is one for Earth. Obviously it is to liberate it. But let me ask some questions first. How can you expect to have people who are in the most basic stage of human development be in charge of your planet, its societies, and its governance? You cannot. It would lead to the destruction of humanity and it has in many other scenarios in the history of Earth. We simply looked at what was happening and where it led to. What happened was wars, and where it led to was death and suffering. We looked at your power structures and where they led to was domination and subordination. There was nothing of higher order to be gained by leaving earthlings in charge of their own fate. So God asked for the star seeds to come forward. They had to be there, bringing in their higher energy, their innate wisdom and their guides with them. We understood that the star seeds would be the first to undergo the ascension process and in so doing, they would awaken to the true reality of life. We knew they would be able to teach their children this, as your father did with you. Me, yes. He was really into Eastern religions and because of this it was his ticket out of pain and the trauma of his early life and World War II. Zaire, starseeds are teachers. When one is connected to the all as the starseeds are, they tell of their experiences. This benefits their children, starseed or earthling, by doing what you call planting seeds. The guides can look at what the child has been exposed to. Perhaps your father told you about spirituality and creation of timelines. So now you see timelines in your later life as your cat seems to be playing games with you. Me, yes, he was downstairs and then upstairs a second later. He changed timelines. Zaire, you have noticed the more you tell your neighbors of your life the more ships and ghosts they see and they have more paranormal experiences. Me, yes. They do. This place is full of ghosts. I keep sending them to cross over but there's just more and more. Zaire. You are planting seeds just as your father did with you. Me, my brother used to laugh at him but my brother is the earthling. Zaire, yes, your sister and yourself were more interested. Me, yes. She's still an earthling though. I wanted to discuss the roles of the parents. One is firmly ensconced in the matrix, the other is living a lifestyle of searching and change. Zaire, 
you see with the two couples you are thinking of that the mother is the earthling and firmly connected to the matrix. They were the money handlers, for one thing, in both families. The father is the one who has had the traumatic life that is always the impetus for change in personal growth. In effect these starseed slash earthling couples have one who is allowing the other to undergo an ascension process and as this parent grows, typically the children are witnessing this firsthand. Me, we did. We saw it wasn't much fun and that ended up being the case for me as well. Not a picnic. Zaire, yes, it will get easier as the collective unconscious is raised in frequency. Me, what I've noticed is that these earthlings in these partnerships are capable of using the system to some advantage and in my mother's case it was financial advantage. Thanks for the car, mom. LOL she looked down her nose in complete disdain at me because I was, just like my father, couldn't manage money to save my soul at the time. I got better at it later on, but back then I used money to fill the chasm that unmet needs left inside of me. It doesn't work. Sometimes you just have to face your stuff. She wanted me to be like her ego parenting, but I was my father's daughter because we were both the ones undergoing ascension. Zaire, and the pain your unmet needs caused for you was the pain you sought to heal. That is ascension at the moment for humanity on planet earth. It gets easier as you leave the third dimension, and when you stop warring it will become easier still. Me, I've always wondered what a starseed would find so fascinating about an earthling. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. I tried to date them but they just made the unmet need chasm even bigger. I figured out pretty early in life I was on the wrong rock. Zaire, perhaps the attraction is one of, well, perhaps convenience. The one who cannot manage their money, because of course there is no money on your planet Elteron, will mate with someone who is a better financial manager. Such was the case with your parents and the couple you are thinking of. Me, I had to learn to manage money and it will be my job going forward because I have to share this service with someone from Elteron who has no concept of the value of anything which of course is Ivo. So I have to do the earthly things and he does the ET things. That's how we'll split the service. I could see him having an earth consultant in the TV station and an ET consultant to discuss content with. The earth consultant would manage electronics, Wi-Fi signals, maybe even deal with computer purchases, stuff like that. The technical side. Zaire, so you are then marrying Earth's humanity with humanity from the stars. Me, should be interesting. Worth a few books, I'd say. Maybe that's why I find these relationships so interesting. Zaire, I believe it has to do with one partner providing stability while the other partner goes through an ascension process. So one partner is grounded and solid while the other partner is more etheric and mutable. Me, I know of many starseeds who have twin flames in the galaxy, but are partnered with an Earth partner in order to be supported in their work. I've come across some. Then there are the other starseeds who are partnered with darkness or are in energy vampiring relationships where their energy is being sucked dry by the partner. Believe me, folks, don't bother with these ones because the minute your energy is lower than theirs, they'll dump you and head off for a new partner. These people would be the ones to cheat as well because that's one reason people cheat, for more energy. Zaire, however, sometimes the partner becomes the new catalyst for change within the starseed, even the earthling. With the constant reminder that you are attracting negative mates, perhaps this will provide an incentive to change. Me, it didn't for me. It provided an incentive to stop dating. If you can find a partner who's willing to work out issues to your mutual satisfaction, then you've got a gem. Hang on to that one. Someone who is mature enough to want to stay and work things out rather than just find a new partner or cheat on the one they have is a gold mine. So yeah. We're just saying to take a look at your partnership or take a look at others and see if you can tell who's the starseed and who is the earthling. Or are they both earthlings? Or are they both starseeds? See if you can tell. I know my friend Debbie Solaris is definitely a starseed, but she's with a man who's very interested in ET life. So are they both? Debbie would know. I'm sure in the future relationships will change a lot as the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies become more awoken on earth. But for now. I like to look to see the plan in action and what was engineered by the universals in order to help to change this planet. Thank you Zaire. Zaire, you're very welcome, Sharon. Me, maybe we can do a book about Sirius, once I'm done with the Mercurians. Zaire, I'd love to. If you're interested in learning more about Zaire, read her ET profile on our first website. I'll link it in below.